And finally, 40 years ago this month, a small but historic monthly magazine called The Progressive became only the second publication to have a story banned by the federal government. The first was the Washington Post for the Pentagon Papers. The Progressive was attempting to public publish the last secret of the H-bomb. Bill Loiters is editor of The Progressive. He's author of An Enemy of the State, the biography of the late editor of The Progressive, Erwin Knoll. He spoke with WBAI earlier today. The Pentagon Papers case was the first time in U.S. history that the government tried to block publication uh, of an, of material on national security grounds. In the Pentagon, case, uh, Pentagon Papers case, obviously the government failed. They came back with another try in the progressive case in 1979, uh, and then therefore, for a period of more than six months, the progressive was enjoined uh, by law from publishing or otherwise disclosing the contents of an article regarding how hydrogen bombs are designed. How did that article come to be? A freelance reporter named Howard Morlin, who I'm going to meet up with later today, he's coming to town for a commemorative event that's happening on this at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. Howard Morlin went searching for information about nuclear weapons using the resources that were available to him in a tour that he was provided of some nuclear facilities and in the course, his goal was to uh, uncover a uh, somewhat of a secret, a, a mechanism uh, that is involved in the explosion of a hydrogen bomb. And he did find what was the secret. The government learned that the Progressive Magazine was about to publish an article about this, and it brought an action against it in federal court in March of 1979. That action did lead to the issuance of an injunction. That injunction was in effect all the way into mid-September, just around now, 40 years ago, when the government abandoned its case, dismissed the case against the progressive, and the article was allowed to be published. Was the issue really the secret? The secret itself wasn't that big of a secret, in a way. The secret is that there was no secret. The secret was that this whole idea that there needed to be this um, pervasive layer of secrecy over anything having to do with nuclear weapons served no real deterrent purpose in the world. It merely served a repressive purpose, and it kept information from the public to prevent an honest discussion about the United States' nuclear program, its capabilities, and, um, and its wisdom, or I should say its lack of wisdom. And so the goal of the magazine in publishing this wasn't to endanger national security. That was never an option from this part, from the information that was disclosed, but to challenge the mystique of secrecy which attended to the nuclear weapons program of the United States. What effect did that have on the progressive? It was expensive. I think there was more than a quarter of a million dollars in legal costs, which was quite a lot of money in 1979 that was racked up in the course of defending the progressive against this case. The ACLU did step in uh, and offered uh, free legal assistance, but it was only part of the progressive's legal defense team. Remember what happened here was that the entire force and might of the United States government was brought to bear against a tiny political magazine in Madison, Wisconsin, with a staff of less than a dozen people and really nothing in the way of financial resources to defend against a uh, full frontal attack on its right to publish. And yet it did. It stood up to it. It fought back. It pointed out the absurdity of the government's position to try to block access to information which was readily available in the public domain in which the government was forced to concede. The case fell apart because it became so uh, apparent to all that the information was readily available in the public domain. Uh, that the government had no late to stand on in trying to keep certain information secret. It had to abandon its case, and 40 years ago, that's what it did. All right. Anything you'd like to add? The Progress Magazine is alive and kicking. The issue that is most recently come out and is available on our website contains a story by myself about the H-bomb case in, in commemoration of its 40th anniversary. Become a subscriber. Become part of what the Progressive has been trying to do for 110 years. Great. You're like one of the oldest around. We're one of the oldest continuing, continuously publishing um, publications in the United States. Certainly among the political publications, we've outlasted most of them. 
Bill Loaders is editor of The Progressive. He's an author. He's the author of An Enemy of the State, the bi- biography of the late editor of The Progressive, Erwin Knoll. And in just one more last story, European countries backing the 2015 nuclear agreement with Iran say rising tensions underline the need for diplomatic efforts towards de-escalation and resumption of dialogue. A joint statement Friday from Germany, France, Britain, and European Union foreign policy and uh, Chief Federico Mogherini voiced deep concern over Iran's latest actions. This week, the United Nations Atomic Watchdog confirmed that Iran is preparing to use more advanced centrifuges, another breach of the limits in the nuclear deal that is slowly unraveling after President Donald Trump withdrew the United States from it last year.